everybody. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome. We have returned. Hey, with... Uh, with... Ravana Returns! Yes, today's book club is Ravana Returned by Dan Abnett. Um, yeah, so second in the Ravana trilogy. Before we start, um, thanks to everyone who has contributed to this. We've had a couple of questions in from patrons. If you want to be the one asking the questions, then the Patreon is in the thing below. Thanks to KCP Fargo, who did the cover art. And um, yeah, thanks to everyone for continuing watching. Uh, we will be back to the normal process of asking the Patreon on what we should do next as soon as we got through all the Ravener books. Apparently there's four, not three. Well, there's the Majos as well, right? <laughs> and and then that we should have really read a short story before we read this, but yeah. I mean, there's just a lot. There's we a can't lot. do one of these about all of them. Also, just to say, thank you so much for sending absolutely zero fan art. Yay. <laughs> this is the best, the, the title sequence is all we're going to get. <laughs> yeah, that's good. We're happy. Uh, it's because we set the rules, like no demons, no Dark Eldar. <laughs> No, no Tyranid. No Tyranids, yeah, yeah, no yeah. Tyranids. Uh, Ravana Return, the second book in the Ravana series. Um, you like this a lot more. Yes, I raced through it, really, really enjoyed it. Um, always, you can tell my WhatsApp's pinging Ian like, oh my God, it's really good. And I've been allowed to do a summary yeah, I think again. this is the thing now. You're doing the uh, movie pitch summary. So what happens in this book, Mira? Okay. Ravana Returned. <laughs> Our heroes are returning undercover to the city of Petropolis. Think Blade Runner vibes with a side sprinkling of acid rain, mindless servitude, plenty of grim and many dark. <laughs> lucky for lucky for the Empire, our squad are back as a cultish goings on are rife and Jada Trice and his secretive squad are up to no good. Something unexpected is excavated in a temple and it causes trouble. Mm. The shutdown and elimination of an entire magisterium department to be precise. Through Ravenous team members going <laughs> undercover into the most mind-numbing office jobs available, quite literally death by admin, they discover the secretists have been exploring a forbidden language called Enuncia, which has the power to explode people in the manner of the Bene Gesserit Paul Atreides voice Dune fans. <laughs> there are loads of chaos cults all over the place and terrible things happen to everyone. <laughs> Everyone's favourite over elocutor, Sholto Unworth, is tortured. Kara Swole is suffering from astroblastoma after her heroic spaceship Klingon and Rescue. And fan favourite Matthew, Matthewin? Matthewin. Matthewin pays the ultimate price. Carl Thelonious has been avoiding the moody blues by doing flex and unleashing his inner crazy reds in the form of a powerful demon named Slight, who luckily can Hulk smash all the crazy overpowered baddies in their swarms of killing birds. Um, at the point Matthewin dies, it was horrible, but we knew someone would die. Yeah. That's an Alan Partridge reference, old people. Turns out the rogue traders, so, turns out the rogue traders, comment if you'd like Ian and I to play this game, have been bringing back warp infected computers so the secretists could research Anuncia and use it to power up a devilish network of temples here. It turns out that Petropolis is a machine built by an ancient heretic. And when connected to enough dutiful emperor worshippers and temples, it will power up. And the big bad, the dia, the diadochoi? Diadochoi, I the reckon. Diadochoi. Diadochoi? The diadochoi plans diadochoi. to use this power to ascend to godhood. I think that's what happened. We can check with Ian. There is a massive fight. I don't remember much about it, but the bad guys get smashed and yay. There is a big twist and reveal at the end too. Who remembers the prologue from the first book? Yes. Some dude scrabbling for secrets on an archaeologist site who came to a fiery end? Well, a main secretist turns out to be Molotov, the guy we last saw being blown up in that prologue, and he's mega pissed. P.S. At the very end, Carthonius style decides he loves Kara Swole and cures her from cancer. Spoilers. 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 Yeah. That is, <laughs> I didn't well realise. That's <laughs> all the things that happen. Um, I felt yeah. so passionate about that. There was some There was some stuff in that that I mistakenly thought, because I because when we did the last, so I've just finished reading this. When we did the last one of these, I had already started reading this. Yeah. So I had mentioned things like discovering the, the pictures and the sacristy in the church, which actually happen, happen in, this in this book. One. They're in this book. Um but there's a lot that happens in this book. So it's, much. It's got my, basically, I've tried to divide it up to three acts so we can basically get like, like you know, how this is structured yeah. and then talk about the interesting things. But the problem with it is that um, it's really hard to structure. It's, it's separated yeah. into three books, but they don't really line up with the important parts of the plot. And it's hard <laughs> to separate into three acts because it kind of goes from being, it, it works. It, this feels a bit like a TV series. It, it feels a bit like a Netflix series. Like, 
We started off in the last book, if anyone didn't know, we started off in the last book with um, Ravenous Gang doing, essentially pursuing a drug, warp tainted drug yeah, yeah, yeah. lead that leads them to a rogue trader cartel, uh, which goes all around the galaxy. Uh, this one does not go anywhere else. It's all yeah, in Petropolis, here. which we called Persepolis quite oh, a lot in the last Sorry. time. In the last one, but Petropolis. Um, uh, yeah. They pursue that cult, and the, the the findings were that they're getting these computers from a chaos world yeah. for some reason. Um, this introduces a lot more factions. It does a lot more factions, um, and it's it's very convoluted. It's very like it, not convoluted. Yeah. It's just it feels like one of those Netflix series where you've got like fifteen different threads going yeah. on at once. I mean, props to Dan Abnett. There are three or four main plots, and they do come together. Yeah, so, yeah they do. Yay. But I do recommend, one of my favourite things about being friends with Arbiter Ian is that he will organise everything. So we know who's <laughs> in which cult, what they do. And yeah. And I've, I've written it down. Yeah, definitely reading this book and then talking to Ian about it is is brilliant. It brings a lot of colours out of it. But you enjoyed this way more than the first one. I did so much. And I think it's because I knew the characters. Um, and we also heard a bit more of Ravenna's personality. You yeah. got a bit of third person and then it would switch back to him. There's a lot more going on. There was a lot more silliness. Like there was a bit more humour, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Um, also really random, crazy. Like if Tom Cruise was making this movie, I could imagine him going, right, we're going to blow up some balloons. We'll be in a storm and then we're going to jump off yeah. a roof and we'll land on this roof. And there was like silly heists. We got to really see yeah. characters. So yeah, I I just found it more enjoyable. I liked staying in that setting. Yeah. I liked how the characters grew. You remember there was the orphan that came along. Yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he gets a bit of development. Yeah, there was this like slow reveals and it's just all very tantalizing. Mm. And I, what I found really clever because there's so much going on, you're kind of drawn along because yeah. a little bit's revealed and then something happens over here and you're thinking how could this all be coming together? And then there are moments when you're like, oh no, oh no. There's a really chilling moment, for example, where Sholto's walking through a ship, just checking it out. Mm -hmm. And then you hear a voice and like, he's been boarded. And you get these, because you now know these characters, you're like, no. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's And it, it, there's a lot of like short scenes. That's why it felt so filmic, right? There's a lot of yeah, like yeah. little short scenes where you find one thing out or one. You know what? There's also lots of points of view scenes that mm -hmm. are just the bad guys. Yes, we get we, loads of yeah. like, you know, it's really like, you know, what, when you watch Gem and the Holograms, you get to see Gem and the Holograms and then the misfits are talking. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I really like that. It was really insightful because then and that adds to the sense of dread, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, Ravenna and his crew, they've got no idea. And then you're hearing all these really powerful baddies who can literally explode you with a voice or just to tear you apart mm. with a bunch of birds. And you're like, this is going to go badly for the crew. Uh, and they're vulnerable. Yeah. They're more vulnerable. Yeah. Like it's not like they're superhero swashbuckling. There's, as usual, torture, pain, agony, imprisonment. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So should we just go? So yeah. I've tried to divide the book up so we know what the events in order are. Right. So the first act uh, sets it all up, but also the first act's really, really busy. Like all our different threads from the last book are doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. So we start out. It's a year after the last book. They've limped mm. back to Eustace Majoris. Yeah. The team are working on something called special conditions, which means that they're completely secret and have no support from the Inquisition. Yeah. And there's this nice scene where Ravenna just like checks in with each of them as they sleep. Oh, that's appears in their brain and is like, "Are you sure you still want to do this?" I mean, it's kind of creepy, but okay. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like how Ravenna would do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they do. They they do. A, they they have a lot of plot in the first half. They there's a load of other things threaded in with this. But for for the Ravenna gang, mm. first they do a heist, which is the balloon heist, yes. to basically get themselves alter egos and get yeah. themselves a place. They end up with a little house, and they they've all got some alter egos they can pretend to be, and they're hidden within the system. Yeah. Carl insists on running it because he messed up last time, but Carl very slightly messes it up. Yeah. Not it's fine, but he almost messes it up, and. Um, He's then, uh, he acts a bit like a child about it. He's, yeah. he's a bit pissed off about it, right? And Ravana's even like, don't worry, dude, you got this. I'm it's just fine. helping you with the last bit. And he's like, no, yeah. my life is ruined. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so they get their things. They then basically embark on a series of tracking down all the other members of the Contract 13 cartel, yeah. these rogue traders, um, which eventually leads them to the discovery that there is a bigger game going on. We got a little bit of this in the first book, but essentially... Yeah. Jada Trice, who's the Ministry of Subsector Trade, bad dude, uh, bad dude, is um, is in charge of this cartel. Uh, we find out that he is has a sort of secret police force, I guess you'd call, yeah. called the Secretists. 
um, yeah. who secrete people. Um, that's why they call the secretists. They use enuncia. Yes. Which, uh, which is... is the thing we'll get to later, but the thing that is in all the Denabna books. Yeah. yeah. So they use enuncia um, and they're working for something called the Diadokoi, who is like the head um, the of this bad. cult. Right. So they're sort of a chaos cult, but sort of also trying to get power for some reason yeah. we don't know. We also get introduced to the frattery, the divine yeah. frattery, which is brilliant. <laughs> So the Divine Frater we get again. We're going to them a bit later because there's, there's all these factions now. <laughs> Divine Frattery and Orfeo Culzian, my favourite character in this book. Orfeo Culzian. Yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, who are an actual chaos cult. And they're trying to work, some of the demon called Slight. They've been, mm. and they're trying to predict and move things around so that the um, the most likely series of events happens to summon the demon. Yeah. And they don't um, know where he's going to pop up, but no. they know the demon's connected to Ravenna. Yeah. And they know that he's that, that there's an attack that happens, like they attack Jada Trice and and we find out that Anuncia is used because Trice's like chief soldier, Revoke, yeah. um, uses it to banish the demon they attack him with. Great name, um, Revoke. Revoke. Yeah. Um, there was a lot less S na- confusing S names in yes. this we quite liked. Um <laughs> Uh, and then we have the ministry, the magistratum, which magisterium, yeah. which is the um, which is the bill the, in yeah, space. It's the bill, um, <laughs> and they are they were in they were re- like trying to track this because they, they do special crimes. The special yeah. crimes department is dissolved, and then everyone's killed. Everyone gets killed apart it's from Maud, Maud who, who is awesome. and, and suddenly that great big car of her uncle's suddenly becomes relevant. Yes. So much time was spent on that in the last book. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's brilliant. There's been a lot of foundation laid. Yeah, there has, there has. So, so that's the first. Act. So you get sort of introduced to what's happening at the end of it. You kind of find out that that um, you've got the secretists, you've got the frattery, they're all fighting, yeah. and and you've also got Ravenous gang. Um, then it moves on to like quite a fast-paced sequence of events that sort mm. of raises the stakes. So after that happens, we've got a load of fast-paced events which sort of escalate the escapes. First, yeah. um, Sko, who was uh, captured in the last book, escapes. Yeah. Carl's in charge. Carl goes after him. It's Carl's fault because he was using Flex to cope with his previous yeah. failure. Carl left him alone with lubricant and handcuffs. Yeah. Duh. yeah. And um, I think it was like the doctor loosened the bonds or something yeah. classic. And um, <laughs> uh, Sko runs. There's like an action packed train top chase, truck yeah. top chase, um, at the end of which Carl turns into a fucking demon yeah. and Hulks gloms out. him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but secretly. And, and then secretly it's like, oh yeah, he fell under a truck. <laughs> um, yeah, because no one sees. That's the first. Well, I mean, obviously, it's been hinted to that Carl's going wrong, and this is like, yeah, really quite Carl's bad. Carl's going quite wrong. <laughs> um, throughout this, where there's a few comments on how he like. Uh, well, we'll get to it a bit, but a few comments on how he like starts to devolve and yeah. is, is not the same person. Oh, yeah, loads to say on that. Yeah. Um, the uh, knowing this, the team hatch a plan to um, go and work in the ministry in the administratum offices yeah. as the most in the most boring office jobs they can yeah. to see what's going on, and they discover essentially that it's an ansia. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, Siskind, who mm. was uh, the road trader from last time, yeah. the surviving road trader, has teamed up with Lucius Warner, a bounty hunter, They're who I think horrible. occasionally popped up at the start. Yeah. And they have managed to capture Unworth. So they yeah. find out the Ravenous on the planet. And Siskind essentially takes over the cartel from a guy called Akunin, who is mm. who is killed. Um, we discover that the cartel are working directly for Jada yeah. Trice. They're working for the Secretists. Siskind is now in charge. But what this importantly does is it lets Jada Trice and the Secretists know that Ravenous is still alive. They find uh, the biggest source of psychic activity they can't account for and go and storm it, which turns out to, to be, be the, the frattery. The frattery. Yeah. But so they... also at this point as well, this is where the whole magisterium gets cleaned out, completely killed. Yes, so the Magisterium is then dead. And then Maud is kind of released to join Ravenous crew in a way. Yeah. So then in the third act, it's basically a great big build up to a big old fight and discovery. Uh, The stakes go even higher than I was expecting. Unbelievable. Um, The, uh, the, uh, the secretists, the secretists have obviously failed to get Ravenna, but they have got Orfeo, and Orfeo manages to get in with the secretists and goes, right, we've got this idea for a trap. We're going to use this demon guy that I've got that I used to try and kill Jada Trice earlier. So there's some funny interactions. Yeah. We're going to kill Ravenna, but we're going to use Enuncia to control the demon, so it doesn't matter if Ravenna's limited. Mm-hmm. Uh, they attack Ravenna. 
it does not go well. Essentially, the demon gets killed by something, which turns out to be, of course, Carl. But again, <laughs> Ravenna doesn't notice. No, Carl, aka Slight. Aka the demon Slight. Yeah. So, so Orfeo's like, yeah, great. So I, I was mm. brought in to help the Fratini get Slight, and Slight has appeared. Um, anyway, and then uh, they go and storm this big ceremony. Um, we find out a few things. We find out that the Diadokai is Moloch, the Enuncia yes. user, Cognitai Enuncia user, that was at the very start of yeah. this was the set up for the gang at the start of Ravenna 1. And at the very start, he was archaeology looking for an he was doing, words. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, we find out the whole city was planned and made by an ancient heretic who planned the whole city out. So when enough people are singing in temples, yeah. it will make you like godlike or demon-like. Yeah, and the idea is to raise Moloch to godhood and they, um, they, they go to try and stop the plans. It doesn't go that well. And then yet again, Carl demons. Demons up. Demons up. And um, although the Diadokai escape, the whole fucking thing is blown open. Uh, Kulzian uh, saves Moloch. But basically at the end of it, it's quite a fast paced end. At the end, yeah. Zale's in a coma because, um, and he's definitely going to wake up and go, Carl's a demon. So, yes. you know, Carl's trying to cover for that. And um, Kara Swole now, does she know that Carl's a demon? Or? So Kara Swole was the only person who saw Carl be a demon, but then Carl also cured her brain cancer. Yeah. So, so she's like in debt not to say anything. I can't believe she wouldn't say something to Ravenna. So I that's, know. I can't wait. I can't believe Ravenna hasn't bloody noticed or scanned someone's brain yet. Anyway. Yeah, okay. We'll get, we'll get into how we get the book done. <laughs> um, that's all your events in the book. It's all a lot more yeah. intertwined than that. But at the end is really fast as well. In the end, we're like, right, we need to go immediately onto the next step, which yeah. probably is. But we need to go immediately onto the next step and, and move forward um, to try. Oh, Moloch escapes off world. So yeah. they immediately go in pursuit with Unworth. Um, I feel like we yeah. need a diagram. Jesus. Yeah. It's like, we, it, it, that's what I mean. It feels like you're watching, yeah, like, like Stranger Things. And uh, the something. Expanse. I was saying yeah, the, yeah, expanse yeah. the Expanse is really, we always talk about The Expanse all the time, but The Expanse also has that notes thing of, in the first season, it's just a missing persons case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knew? It's a detective story. It'd be a singing planet with exploding demons and people yeah. jumping off rooftops on balloons and doctors hidden away and yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it and is it's, a lot. It's good. It reads like that sort of series, but weirdly, everyone talks about there being this, you know, this Eisenhorn series, Eisenhorn will make a great series and mm. it kind of would, but... I think Ravenna might make a better one. Yeah, this would be amazing. I think in the Netflix era, it would be really amazing. And it's mm. kind of sad that it's, I know this is heresy to say, haha, pun, but the fact that it's a Warhammer, so it probably couldn't be made into a series or something. Yeah, I don't know. But this this feels so much, it feels so different to the first one even. It does. Like, it, there's a whole moment of this where it's much more Brazil than cyberpunk. Yes, yes. Loads of different moods again. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know I always say this, but Dan Abnett, I bow to you. Mm. He's just a genius. And of course, the same thing we said last time, that this is much, very much Dan Abnett stopping doing the first person thing and starting and doing much more of the other thing that I know him for, yeah. which is many, many, many points of view, constant mm. interwoving plots. Do, yeah. you, do you remember when we read um, Neuromancer? Yeah. Because I'm getting, yeah, yeah. it does give me a bit Similar Neuromancer thing. vibes. Yeah. yeah. Although maybe, I think maybe the first one was a bit more Neuromancer. Maybe. This, it's because of this big scene in the ministry, which is, yeah. We'll get, again, we've got yeah, let's talk about that. that. Yeah. But yeah, but first thing, the first thing I wanted to talk about was the factions. Okay, explain the factions, please. So we, we've got basically four factions and it gets a bit less by the end. Uh, five factions, depending how you do it. So the first faction we've got, right, we know is the cartel. Yes. And they're not in this a lot. They have no. a big bounty hunter now. But it's horrible. mostly just Siskind and Sko and Sko gets killed. Yeah. But they're the ones who go and catch a Unworth. Mm -hmm. And they are, yeah. They are, they basically have it out for Ravenna now. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, the big thing about the cartel we find out in this is that actually they're not the big bad. No. Like they, the, they, the, the second faction of the big bad, yeah. which are really weird and interesting, well, which are the secretists, yeah. right? Yeah. So the cartel have just been shifting these flecks, which are basically from the warp corrupted computers yeah. that are teaching the Anuncia, which is the really bad thing. Yeah. And uh, I didn't realise, but you know, the demon was tr that goes into Carl was in a bit of glass. Yeah, yeah, that's how he got demons. So yeah, that's how crazy dangerous these drugs are. Yeah. Forget your heroin, don't get on the flecked. Don't get on the flecked. Uh, you want to prefer the Gladstones. <laughs> the Gladstones. The Gladstones, which what, are the other... What, your moody hammer, yeah, you? Yeah, your moody hammer. <laughs> um, yeah, so the other thing that we learn about is the Secretists, right? So the Secretists yeah. get by. We met Jada Trice and Revoke a little yeah, bit before. Which I was really surprised about. The Secretists are actually pretending to be from the establishment. 
Yeah. So they're completely undercover, like a really sinister secret, a- secret, secret service, agent. Yeah. And I didn't know that you could have that. I yeah, think yeah. Inquisitors would go off the wall, but everyone the, the else... The local we... government has their own special forces, secret yeah. agent, secret service. Yeah, so they're this like... And their methods are really weird. They're very much Jada... So you've got Jada Trice, who is the chief provost. Yeah. And you've got the Diadokoi, who turns out to be posing as the planetary governor, which is Monarch. Mm. And they've set up this system, this secret police force they have, who make people go away and they have a load of weird tools to do it. First, they're learning Enuncia, which is quite a big thing. Yeah. The so second, powerful. Such a powerful weapon. The other thing they've got is the Sheen Birds. Yes. So we mentioned this last time. They weren't really used. The, the, the Petropolis has these mechanical birds, mm. which have always been part of it, who act like birds. They just bird around being yeah. birds. And we were wondering why they spent so much time describing the birds. <laughs> now we know. But the, that's not a Warhammer thing, is it? You, I mean, it's the sort of thing you get. But no, those, you can't get you a can't machine play. Bird. I'm playing my flock of birds now. You, there are various flocks of birds in Warhammer you can play. <laughs> Yeah, Excellent. there are various ways you can use a load of fl- flocks of birds. Um, okay, great. Yeah, yeah, that's sort of a thing. Um, uh, okay, look so out yeah, for that Arbiter Ian episode. So they've got a guy with a lure who can control the sheen yeah. birds and get them to like smush people. Uh, so there's a few pe- few times people are killed by the secreted by the secretists. Yeah, Alfred Hitchcock via the know. method of yeah Hitchcock birds. Mm. Um, so they've got those. They've also got these gun dogs. Which are like, oh, yeah. yeah, like bloody great robot dogs with guns attached to them. Yes. They've got them. Yeah. They're basically like, at the start, I was like, this is a little secret agency or a little mm. occult cabal. But as you go on, especially once yeah. the fratery are involved, you realize they're not an occult cabal. No. They're a very organized, mil- param- like a paramilitary force. Yeah, super powerful. They've basically corrupted so many people that one of the only good departments, the magisterium, have to be completely erased because yeah. they're getting in the well, way of the secretists. The Magisterium Department of Special Crimes. Sorry. Other Magisterium Departments have yes. to take them over, basically. Yeah. yeah. So that's Sorry. so you got, yeah, you've got the secretists who um are really interesting just as a the lo- it's not there's a lot of stories in 40k where it's like the local governor has gone bad. Yeah, yeah. But and their their bodyguard have gone bad or something. Um and also local governors are obviously in 40k are often very aristocratic figures, like yeah. they're in nobilities and things like that. The interesting thing about Petropolis is they're politicians. Yes. Like it's a the 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 high ups are politicians. Yeah. With um, with control over departments, which gives them their power. Yeah. Which is a much more real world way of doing that. Than, Definitely. Than the usual thing, which is you're on a planet and the Lord Governor is in, is is King whatever or Lord yeah. something, and all the nobility are infighting like nobles do. Yeah. This is like official. There's yeah. an official department called the Secretists. They're the they're yeah. the bad guys, and they have transports and armor and weapons and guns and storm squads they breach us you know they can do things they've got everything it yeah. felt felt very strange reading this in the climate of you know tories and yeah, 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 yeah. and we're reading about you know these senators who are basically like just, just a corrupt. similar yeah. similar corrupt bastards <laughs> um uh does that mean boris johnson before tonight as we record it is going to attempt to become a god via by a weird word. Yeah, pretty sure. And I think Corbyn's going to turn into a demon and Hulk really? smash. Yeah, good. That's how it's going to work. <laughs> um, right, so um, uh, the other thing you've got, my favourites, the Divine Frattery. Oh, tell us why they're, they're fucking your... hilarious. Why I love do you them. love them? I just really like them. they're like monkey. They're kind of monkish. The, the monkey. I thought you said they're like monkeys. They're not like monkeys. <laughs> they're monkish. They've got their own... They do have a monkey, though. They do. <laughs> they're, they're very much of the kind of religious order and they have their foresight and their fortune telly. I just really like how much detail's gone into building them. Like, okay, so it's, it's a load of wizened old men who are worshipping... The uh, who are worshiping chaos and yeah. seeking to bring about the, a demon. They do this through precognition and looking in silver mirrors. Precogs. Yeah. Um, and they scry in silver mirrors, which is a very Zinchian thing in yeah. 40k, um, to find out clues. They get words from the mirrors, and the yeah. words, they 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 can they um measure how many times a word appears. And if something appears lots in the last okay. hour, that's like, oh, the 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 um the chances are going more in the direction of that word being okay. important, yeah? So, so good that, to be around when you've got your take a break crossword yeah. puzzles out. Yeah. Great. Um, the, but there's a lovely little bit of building like that. Like, um, they all wear one eye patch. Right. And that's the good eye that no one else is allowed to look see and they use to look at the mirrors, which is why when they meet people they respect, they will lift their eye patch and go, I look upon you with my good eye oh. as like a measure of respect. And this whole thing plays out at the start. There's like a wizened old leader in a yeah. walking frame and they meet this guy, Orpheo Colzian, 
who is brilliant. Orfeo Colzian is an expediter of weird occult things who is brought <laughs> in to just make things more likely to happen. He's got a bodyguard who's like a badass woman who's not a magic. Yeah. And he's like very well presented and he sort of saunters in. He has his list of demands. He gets paid very well. And he has a huge amount of curios he keeps, which are innocuous devices that have led to someone's death. <laughs> Yes. Like the banana peel you slipped on. Yeah, would probably be played by Tom Hiddleston or someone yeah, like that. Yeah, that sort yeah. of thing. Or like like um, Tim Curry. Yes, yeah. Tim Curry's the Tim one. Tim Curry would be a good Orfeo Colzian yeah. uh, a while ago. But um, yeah, so he's got, he collects things that, um, that, that are the thing that caused someone to accidentally die. Strands of fate interweaving. Yes. And he's got lots of occult artefacts. I mean, that is, you know, the Dan Abnett detail that goes into one it's faction lovely. that could be a novel or a trilogy in its own right. And it's really funny because I normally love whimsical shenanigans mm. like that. But I found myself much, much more drawn to the police department, which is very yeah, me, yeah. isn't it? Down at heel, <laughs> you know, good at heart detectives, just trying to slog through and break a case, all being completely assassinated. But I really loved that kind of, um, it just felt like such a juxtaposition. There was like all this firepower going on and people are turning into demons and telepathic powers. And then just these plods yeah, yeah, yeah. being taken off a case. Uh, who have, they, they don't interact with anyone until the very end. They've had their yeah. own story all the way through just yes. trying to solve this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. love that. I it, thought it was beautiful. Um, Orphea I also quite like because he's a bit like a Carl Phonius in that we said last time, I really like Carl because mm. he is not, the character you expect to be in 40k. Weirdly, yes. he's becoming it in this. Oh yeah, he's so but, um, much more 40k he, yeah. now. But but he starts off and there's this thing where you're like, he doesn't really fight. He can, but he's mm. not a great warrior. He doesn't really he's not psychic. He's not like some action star. He's he's just very knowledgeable. Yeah. He's he's, he's techie but without being a tech priest. Yeah. He's just a very, very well read, knowledgeable person who isn't a wizened cyber scribe or a tech yeah. priest. He's just, yeah, it's like... But he's also been trained by Ravenna. Yeah, like the Inquisition so. need... And, and you go, of well, the minute you see him in action, you're like, yeah. of course the Inquisition need these people. Of course those people are exactly how the Inquisition works. Orfeo Colzian's a similar thing. <laughs> You'd never see him on the table, but you're like, he's a businessman, basically, yeah. who trades in occult things, and his speciality is being hired on like a consultant to restructure your <laughs> magic weirdness. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so you go, right, well, we really want this demon to appear. We've been doing everything we can. Yeah. Isn't It doesn't seem to be enough. Uh, phone the local chaos consultant who can come in and restructure our plan yeah. to get the demon. He's kind of like a cross between a wild magic sorcerer slash yeah, paladin. Yeah. So, yeah, or Atlanta, like a like lawful wild Everything magic. he's got is like to do with the device, right? So he's yeah. not like, a, sort of, like an artificer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just love that you've fallen in love with them. I'll have to buy yeah. you an eye patch, Ian. Yeah, yeah. Get my, my <laughs> Roman eye patch so I can look upon people with my good eye. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that Orfeo Colzian um, in the, and the Frattery, they're this new faction that sort of get wiped out there. I think mostly the Frattery are there as a delivery device for Orfeo Colzian. Oh, yeah. Orfeo's the fun put bit here. Yeah. And presumably is going to be in the third book because he yeah. drags away Moloch at the end. I think the Frattery also need to be there to show how powerful the Secretists are. That's true. Because they pretty much get obliterated yeah the frattery would be the bad guys in anything else anything else and Orfeo would be the big bad in anything yeah. else when the secretists took them down I was like whoa there's, okay there's also quite a lot of humanity to the Orfeo thing because he's he's sort of confident he's a bit of a, like a con man a bit yeah. like he can do his job and he's sort of confident and knows the rules of interacting with the frattery but when the secretists come he basically has to bluff and lie to get them to take him seriously mm -hmm. they're gonna kill him yeah and he's like well i've got this secret packet of documents that i'm gonna send to someone and if i don't i'm checking so every clever. hour and it's like he just bluffs his way into basically being the mate of moloch yes it's definitely gonna be really going wrong. really parlays his way up the ladder there yeah and it, you feel for him. You really feel for his yeah. life. It's like, oh, sh I'm in danger and I need to he, yeah. hustle my way back out of this. No, I love that. I mean, I, lo I love your expression as well, Ian, when you say it's not something you'd see on the table. No. It's no. interesting, yeah. Yeah. So that's um, that's them. So you, you've got, we've got our cabal, we've got our secretist, we've got our frattery, we've got the magisterium, the magisterium. which is the police. Uh, which is just Maud, basically, yeah. by the point of this. It's just Maud and all the plot, all the building we did last time. Like, her uncle gets killed by Sheen yeah. Birds. She oh. manages to get away from that. Um, we have them. There's a really lovely scene with her uncle. Yeah, I love that. Um, where her terrible. uncle's uh, has, you know, dementia, presumably. Yeah. Um, and is only able to remember what he's doing when he's playing the piano and who mm. he is. And yeah, it's yeah, and it's it's really well done. Yeah. And then thrown away. Um, and yeah, so they've got that. And then you've got Ravana's gang. Yay. Who are kind of the ones with the least development. 
Well, I don't know. I mean, some of them are pretty developed. Kara Swall falls in love with a doctor out yeah, of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Carl goes crazy demon. I really want it. Let's talk about Carl. Let's talk about Carl. Okay. So Carl changes. So one of the things that really wound me up is... So you're a completely overpowered, you know, telekinetic psyker. And you think, oh, Carl's come down. He hasn't paid any attention to how he's dressing. He's wearing a cotton silk shirt and he's eating a drumstick with a hand and wiping it on his flouncy shirt. Mm. And you're Ravenna and you don't think this man is being inhabited by a demon. Come on. Um, but I really loved the, you get the insight from Carl. So you see him having this tumble into darkness mm. and doubting himself and taking more drugs and not caring as much about how he's dressed. Yeah, and I, I wonder if part of the way part Carl's presented in the first book is that he's such an anachronistic figure. Like, mm. he isn't like the rest of them. Yeah. He cares about these things that he probably shouldn't as a thrown agent. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if there's an argument that Ravenna's going, oh, Carl's finally growing up. Carl's finally coming into his... Ah, oh, he doesn't care about his suits anymore. It's not like Carl, but maybe he's, you know, mm. he's, he's taking himself a bit more seriously now. I think also... Um, there's an element of Ravenna being quite obsessed with Zale. Yes, that's true. So yeah. he kind of takes his eye off, you know, a the, lot. The, uh, all the attention is on what is this kid, you know, how, what's his special yeah, power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we covered Carl. Carl. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, there's there's more to it. Like, like it gets really, like, there's there's obsessive things. Like he comes down and he's got 30 rings on his bad arm. Oh, yeah. He goes all Johnny Depp. Yeah, like, he goes he does go a bit freaking Johnny Depp, doesn't all he? The, you know, what did you say? He turns into Jack Sparrow. Yeah. He's all foppish and he's got all his jewellery on one hand. And, and he's got like a half his shirt undone and yeah. he's just wearing whatever and swiping his chicken down it while he's got 30 rings on one yeah. hand. And like, yeah. Yeah. It's... But he does seem to be doing his job quite a lot, though, better than he did in the last one. Yeah. So there is, the, I could totally see them as going, oh, Carl's got a bit shaken up by a serious injury, and now he's decided to be a bit more of a serious inquisitorial yeah. and stop worrying so much about his appearance. And, you know, he's an inquisitorial soldier. He's going to, he, mm. he can't wear his fancy suits all the time. No. But yeah. no one notices in his crew that he's damaged, which is kind no. of sad. But you yeah. see a lot of compassion between the crew and other places, like Ravenna going into everyone's mind and checking on them yeah. and. Some nice relationships, but but yeah, he doesn't go into Carl. Carl's. I think there's some. Isn't there a mention quite at the start where where it's like Carl's quite a private person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ravenna respects that and doesn't probe too hard. Okay, that's a good out. I guess this kid is a good excuse, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the fact that Ravenna doesn't know Ravenna doesn't notice when obviously he the first time he demons up. Yeah. Ravenna doesn't notice when um the I the brass thief comes for him like that's the, the yep. demon gets sent the first time and it mysteriously all all the psychers supporting it mysteriously just die, die. because <laughs> uh and, and they think it carl sort of implies it's zale yes it's definitely carl yeah and um 100%. and then of course at the end carl's the only one who does anything to kill all the i know Car like demons. without carl carl is the reason that they succeed yeah yeah well slight not or, or the demon slight. Yes, and this is slightly mis slightly messed up by the fact that isn't Zale's last name Sleet? It's, it's Sleet, yes. Yeah. They're one of those S names cursing us again. Yeah. But I think, you know, the the whole um, thing of... Do we know, at the moment, we don't know how much of Slight is Carl or whether it's a full-out possession. But, so, but it's pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you don't know if Carl is in there with any control or knowledge yeah. or whether now Carl is Slight, if that makes sense. Yeah, and it, it, I get the impression that when you've seen this other places in 40k, it's a lot quicker, that sort of possession thing. Whereas yeah. this is still, Carl's still able to affect a measure of control. Yeah. He's still able to fight it or he thinks, he comes out of this, which is the classic Eisenhorn thing, isn't it? He that, That's an interesting thing, right? Because in Eisenhorn, it's the traditional, all the Inquisitors fall to chaos at the end. Yeah. He chases Quixos. He becomes that. In this, it's Carl doing it. Like, Ravenna isn't the one falling to chaos. Yeah. Or, and Ravenna's heresies go towards, like, hanging out with space elves. Yeah. But, um, I mean, but yeah, Ian, Carl's the one falling. And thinks he can control it. Thinks he can use it for good. You're not going to tell me that there's any book out there where anyone messes with the chaos and the warp and comes out of it unaffected. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Maybe main thing you're allowed to do that by Games Workshop decree. Yeah. yeah. Maybe f what's what's our Flashman equivalent? Uh, Kane. Oh, Maybe Kane's Kane fine. could yeah. fuck around in the warp and come out himself. But like, we need to talk about Ravenna. Yes. So I had a bit of a moan about him last time. Yeah, I like Ravenna. He's too powerful. He's too powerful. In this, he has godlike powers. So I could change your face, Ian, to look like me. Oh yes, the, I yeah, she's a lot of this, isn't it? We there? could go shopping, and I could say, "Yeah, take my take my credit card." Doesn't he like mush the he face? He mushes around? somebody's face yeah. psychically. What else yeah. does he do? 
He has psychic blurring powers. So if we walk through CCTV, we just blur our faces. And telepathic suggestion, a.k.a. Jedi minds, you know, these yeah. aren't the droids you're looking for. Yeah, you can do that. This man can do everything. And this is why the limiter thing is so important, right? <laughs> yes. Because we were talking about the blunts and limiters and all this sort of stuff and, and tons of <laughs> priors. If you're going to put him in as a deus ex, literally anything you need, yeah. you then have to have a reason to turn him off. So, and basically all the peril in this is, oh, we haven't got Ravana. Yeah. That's basically the peril yeah. every time. I mean, I, I thought it was clever that when they were searching for Ravana, the limiter allowed him to escape it, you know, being discovered. Yes. Yeah, that was yeah. good. Yeah, that was really nicely done. I, I did suspect from the start that they would go to the wrong place because it was too, <laughs> too easy. But yeah, it, it briefly, when they learn that Ravana exists, they get all their psychers to scan the city. Yeah. Um, R Ravana realises and puts his limiter on. So the psychers go, well, we can account for all these psychic things. That's the astropath's tower. That's yeah. the navigator's house. Um, but there's one over there. That must be him. And you think it's him. And it is, of course, yeah. the frattery who have, who have been hiring an astropath. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's like in the movies where you see them coming down the corridor and you're like, oh no, they're going to find Ravana, bang, bang, bang. And it's not Ravana, it's the frattery. Yeah. 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 Um, so Do you want to talk about any of the other characters, like Kara Swole? And Kara Swole doesn't get as much in this. Like, she, no. has, uh, she has brain cancer at the start. It is a device so that it can be removed by Carl at the end and put her in his yeah. debt. She's, I think that you get a bit more of Zale, you get a bit more of Carl, you yeah. get a bit more of Ravana. Everyone else you get a bit less of because we spend so much freaking time with all the other factions. Like the main characters in this are like Revoke. <laughs> yeah, the bad uh, yeah, but, Orpheo's a main character. But I want to <laughs> yeah. make some space for Patience Kiss. Oh, who Patience I think Kiss. is awesome. Like she gets basically caught. She gets she has to do such a boring undercover job that she re she reads some Anuncia collapses, and that's how they find out she, she's part of Ravenna's gang. But then she helps save Sholto. She does, and we haven't talked about Sholto. Yeah. Sholto, I'm worth yeah. And uh, they and they have the cutest relationship ever. Um, so Sholto Unworth, poor unlucky fellow, caught. He is a strange little man. It's yeah. mentioned a lot of times. Who has uh, very strange mannerisms of yes. speech. I've I've chosen some a section to read to you, like Sholto's speech. Um, so uh, so he's being uh, he's being interrogated and he says, I don't know. In absolution, I do not. They did not tell me. Well, maybe they didn't. And then this is the Inquisitor. All right, here's another. Where is Ravana and his crew now? And he replies, I don't know. On the surface, that's all I can explicate to the best margin of my knowing. And he goes, I applaud you. They made a special immensity of not telling me the pertinence of their business. They said I shouldn't know for the good of my health. And he's just so over eloquent. Yeah. He's a great character. But I really like the patience Sholto because that relationship developed. Yeah. She had hated him. Yeah, and then But, but it's the same relationship she had with Zael last time, right? Isn't it? Like hapless, <laughs> hapless kid following badass kills everything lady. I mean, it's you and my friendship, so there was a hey, <laughs> hey. there's um <laughs> Uh, there is a scene like where she gets out where she's like they've put her in like a paper dress so that yes. it can be like ripped apart as she fights and yeah. you're like yeah yeah patience kiss um, yeah I, I was like I read that bit there was also Sholto was quite useful at other times like yeah. he's actually very loyal and very helpful he's like you know flying all the flyers and yeah. you know he's like actually quite clever um, um, we should probably give our respect R.I.P. R.I.P. Zeph uh, yeah Zeph Matthew and you were like Nail but not Nail yes <laughs> Also, I knew someone was going to die. I just knew it. And, I mean, why do they have to always kill someone? Yes, kill someone. To kill someone. Because the, the other mag magistrate may just get killed as well. I mean, th this was quite violent. Yeah. It was a lot of torture a lot of killing. And, and killing and, yeah. and pain. And, and people bursting apart. Yeah, and, and even one of the things that was most depressing was the Brazil, like, you know, they're going undercover. And everyone's the always ministry. told me, yeah. Mira, you wouldn't last a day. But the whole of Petropolis is just poor people going to these awful jobs. Yeah. And the, the the description, that chapter where they're all doing mindless sending a communication, it's coming back, all the numbers they're inputting don't make sense. Yeah. Was really depressing. It's quite a hard chapter to read. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was like that, yeah, they've all been given these jobs. All these jobs are terrible. So yeah. Car is just putting pneumatic tubes in a thing. Yeah. All day. And Kiss is just taking reams of data and typing it yeah. in the hope that one of them is a nuncio. Yeah, and the other one is and just a courier. Take, just, just, yeah, yeah, he's just handling Take this document, yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. And it's all of it's like meticulous and 
uh, never ending and yeah. droning. And Nail comes back being like, I can't do it again. Don't no. send me back. People yeah. are dying at their seats. It's yeah. like intense. And this is and this is where we find out that this is what all the computer the chaos computers are for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is potentially because they either are better at finding an ansia or are yeah. more resistant to an ansia. It's like sixty million chaos computers at yeah. work or something, or people at work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the ministry is like a really it's, it's a very forty k thing, yeah. and it's the thing in this novel that makes it a bit less cyberpunk and a bit more. There's less hacking in this. Yes. There's a lot more. Um, Dreary. Dreary, droning administration. Yeah. 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 Oh, and last thing, religion. Religion. So, There's some religion. Some religion. Yeah. So we all know the emperor exists, you know, thank God. There's a little religion conversation <laughs> yeah. where, where they're like, it's it's useful to have the faith and do the rituals because it helps. Yeah. Even if you, and there's an interesting bring, like I think Belknap or Cara bring it up in that conversation, which is a really interesting point where they're like, oh, we've got faith. And they're like, yeah, well, it's easy to have faith in the God Emperor. We yeah. know he definitely exists. Do we? Yeah. But also, I love Kara is like dealing with this cancer and goes to pray. Yeah. And that's part of the plot device. And so I've always known about the Emperor. We're eventually going to read a book about whether he does, or he is alive or isn't alive, how many souls he eats. But I just think. It was really lovely to see how that religion is played out. And you have all of these poor sods who have these mm. horrible jobs, uh, but they will trundle into the temples to praise the emperor. Yeah. And that made the whole Warhammer world feel really real to me. I loved that. Yeah, yeah. Enforced religious. And, and oh, also oh, the, oh. the spread of it. You know, they find this sacristy and then there's... Yeah. Is it yeah. biblical? Like, Well, this is the thing. So there's this... There's this um, one of the plot devices is the... Yeah, this this... It's introduced really late and a bit half assed yeah. to be honest. Oh, it turns out, turns out the architect who built this was a mad architect and we had to destroy all of his things because he yeah. was mad. And he's built the entire, uh, this hive, Petropolis, to to funnel the energies of the warp and turn people into godhood and find Anuncia. And they find this out essentially by, um, uh, which is why the uh, magistrate get killed. They discover the pr a priest uh, finds a hole in a, roof of a yeah. thing it turns out to be a false roof above it is the real roof the real roof is like a picture of eden yes like you they use the word prelapsarian which implies it's biblical that is it's like oh my god that it's like a it's like judeo christian bringing, yeah, yeah. Well, you know our world into I, and i don't think it's intended to be this was made yeah. from humans yeah, yeah. who are familiar with uh uh, Judeo-Christian release, yeah. which in 40k still exists. Oh, in 30k they exist, and they they're referred to as like some people are these weird, yeah, um, uh, catharic people okay. who are basically Christians. Um, but uh, yeah, th there's this idea that um, the magistrate discovered that. That's why they had to be wiped out. Yeah, that was a big key to helping them unlock the Anuncia and find out why they how they can do this was the discovery of this sacristy. Sac yeah. um, and so. Then part of the, there's this re, the use of the Imperium state religion as a tool to turn you into a god yes. is is a thing. But I, I I really loved that we got to see the state religion and then a glimpse of like oh wow that what was this other religion before that and it was very cool. Yeah. yeah, I feel sorry for people who haven't read this book. I liked it so much. You have so you didn't have any comedy noob questions last time. <laughs> I don't have that many questions now because there's not enough. You know, I mean, coming out of our whole book that we read you know which had every single product you could ever buy <laughs> i do have some thoughts and things so firstly cara swole gets cut by a vampire blade is that a thing i don't know not not really okay. not in that sense i think but there are lots of fun swords in this yeah like rhyming blades yeah what's not that? sure what they are do, do they rhyme we'll find out uh i'm sure that they'll be put out at one time okay did you know Carthonius is the inventor of the uh, 40k post-it note? Really? <laughs> piece by piece, Carthonius was extracting the secrets of Tchaikov's riddle. He'd been deciphering for two days. He wrote every scrap of data down on index cards and soft gunned them to the wall of the East bedroom, rearranging them as more details fitted in. Grim dark. There you go. Grim dark post-it notes. Post-it notes. Yeah. Okay. Flying birds of death. Is that a thing? We've, uh, covered, we've that. covered that. Yeah. Why do you think there was so much more grossness and torture in this one? Because the chaos cults turned up, okay. <laughs> like essentially that was what, that's what we were talking about last time, right? Because yeah. there were no chaos cults last time. There was just like a crime syndicate, yeah. normal crime syndicate. Yes. Now it's like, hi, I've I've known this language where if I say it, you turn inside out. Yeah, chaos cults suck. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I just, I guess you know, the other thing I just thought was really bizarre and random was the choice to take a balloon. Yeah. And randomly, like... And I that, forgot all about that till you said it. At the very beginning, in order to infiltrate the building to get their identities, they put these giant weather balloons up 
and then just jump. Just jump in a storm and they can predict the way the storm blows. But presumably, you know, Ravenna could have just placed them there with his mind. I mean, I mean, <laughs> Ravenna can do anything you want him to do. I know. But, uh, he just but yeah, Carl it was... Thonius had to have his plan. Carl Thonius yeah. had to have his plan, uh, which didn't go quite as well. It wasn't a good plan. Yeah. But, um, but he had to get his face mushed by Ravenna. Yeah. If you had to be a character in this book, who would you be? Orpheo Colzian. Would you? Yeah! <laughs> That's a good thing. Look, right? Because he, he's out... a baddie. He's a baddie, but yeah. he's kind of a cool baddie. Yeah. He's kind of not the bad baddie. <laughs> he's he's the... like he's like a collector of interesting things mm -hmm. who happens to help out chaos cults, but he's not in the chaos cult. Yeah, okay. And he's not like, he doesn't have to do a boring, uh, He's not. A spa he doesn't have to be a space marine or a guardsman or some terrible person in an awful in in Imperium job. Yeah. So he's not really... He sort of operates with around the Imperium, yeah. but he's not like overtly a terrible human. He is a terrible human, but he's not. <laughs> he's not like a crime lord torturing yeah. people. He's he's kind of a little bit on the edges. He's a little bit of a you know a, a wild card. So mm. I can see that for you. Well, I was trying to think of who had the like least trauma. <laughs> and I was thinking, who has the nicest time? <laughs> who's the nicest time? Probably Zale has yeah. a long sleep. <laughs> but um, if I wanted to be swashbuckly, I think. Caraswell was again super fucking cool. And so was Patience, Patience Kiss. And yeah, but you know, the horrible things that have to happen to them. Yeah. It's just, you're never safe in the grim dark. You're never safe. I mean, you don't fancy a big right demon on. Oh, I could be Carl. I could be Carl Thonius. You get some nice clothes and a the big deal. The jewellery. You just have to freaking deal with it better. Hulk Hulk. But if I was him, I would just say to Ravna, look, mate, I'm unfortunately a demon. Like, let's work together. Let's work together. <laughs> Woo! That always works out. Oh, yeah. And we should also have a special mention for any department that decides to go completely secret. <laughs> like, just don't do it. Just don't do it. You're always it bad. Always bad. Always bad. This is And this is a plot throughout, <laughs> is that Ravenous... I, I don't quite get it. Ravenous operating under special conditions, yeah. so we can't call in any help. But presumably he could just... Stop. stop. Op now yeah. he knows that it goes all the way to the top. Yeah. Stop operating under special yes. conditions and go, right... I'll have the Navy, please. Yes, the secret is we can't let anyone know Raven is here. We're pretending we're dead. After the first planetary psycho, let's find out if he's here. Okay, they know we're here. Could we call in five of those massive starships that can destroy a planet? <laughs> Exterminators, yeah. shall we? Also, oh. like, I think they end this with them <laughs> thinking Raven is dead again. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! And probably the baddies we think are bad will come back again. Yeah. yeah. Well, we know we're going to get a few of them, right? We're going to get Orpheo Colzian and Zygmunt Moloch. Zygmunt Moloch. He never um, dies. He never dies. I think Jada Trice has gone, though. Jada Trice. Um, I, think, I think we're probably oh, off yeah. Eustace Majorus next time, aren't we? Because yes. they've run away and now we're going to go to somewhere that isn't Petropolis. Um, yeah, so I, um, we're going to have more to be part of the gang because every Inquisitorial squad needs an arbitrator. They do. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, uh, we have one question from Patreon, but I think we've covered bits of it, but it is an interesting one. Okay. Um, Victor says, I'm curious about what you guys thought of the deep dive into the Administratum building. Uh, I think the insane scale and influence of perhaps the most important organisation within the Imperium is such an interesting part of the 40k law, but I haven't seen it properly explored in other BL books. I think Dan Abnett makes it clear that even if the Administratum office was normal, i.e. not looking for enunciate words, you can tell it's a horrible dystopian place to work. Curious to hear your thoughts. I mean... Yeah, you don't see it in other novels apart from as bit part settings for them to go to. Yeah, because you—it's it, the bureaucracy, right? It's the—it's the, it's the least mean, fighty bit. I'm very nervous about this question. I'm kind of glad that you've done that thing of all the Black Library books yeah. because I don't want anyone to suggest in the comments, "Oh, there's a book all about this, and you can read it." A book about scribes? There must be. <laughs> no, don't. We tell can just us. read the book about don't. the scribes. No, because can you imagine, like chapter after chapter of. The emancipation of some poor drone worker. I mean, I think we've even read other books. What was it? Um, Spears of the Emperor. Yeah. Where we had to read about someone's conditioning on a slave planet. Yeah, yeah. It's too much. It's there's there's an there's a lot of interest. I can think of a few really good points. It's like ways it's been brought in. Like yeah. The there's a few heresy books where like there's scientists studying in a lab. There's a good mechanic and book where someone's pulled out of a drone. Uh, the sort of. <sighs> pulled out of that job to go yeah. and be... A, I imagine a lot of, like, sages working for Inquisitors probably were administrators yeah. and scribes who saw too much I and mean, then became... You know, there is introduced a bit. There's a really famous short story, which is about um, 
someone being forgotten, like there's an edict of obliteration saying, well, this Space Marine chapter are gone traitor, so we're going to have to remove them from the records. Okay. They never existed. Yeah. Go into the library, which is like, you know, a hike, a two week hike through the library shelves because it's a billion miles deep. Of course yeah. it is. Um, and this gang of people who are like in, in hazmat suits have to hang, hike through the library into the darkest, most far away parts of the library, yeah. passing like research teams and things on the way. And they eventually get to the shelf that bears the, the information about this Space Marine chapter and they pull out a flamethrower and they torch that like square kilometre. <laughs> so that Amazing. no one, and all that knowledge is just lost. Expunged. So that no one knows it was there. <laughs> and anyone who sees them is shot. Bloody because hell. you can't have like anyone know that anyone Everything. was there to do anything. That Space Marine chapter is gone now. I mean... The other thing I have to say is, I mean, that example notwithstanding, it reminds me too much of the fact this is a satire. We are satirising <laughs> office cubicle worker culture. And luckily, you and I have jobs where we can be a bit creative. But, oh, my gosh. Yeah. When you think about a society that puts everything into workers being workers, it's kind of where we're in. And it's, yeah. take me to the shootouts and the space stations and it's a trap every time. Yeah. Yeah, but there we go. Yeah, no, it's um, it's it's what I think of one of the nice, but one of the really nice bits of the novel is that yeah. scene where you find out what everyone's job is. Yeah, it, it's actually really interesting. I mean, and it, it's gone into in a lot of detail as yes, well. Yes, yeah. it is. I think if I ever got like a Warhammer three wishes, one of my wishes would to be to just sit down with Dan Abner and have him take us through each of the scenes, yeah. and, and you know, because it's just really beautifully woven together. This one. Yeah, great. Well, there we go. So um, we are going to move on. To Ravenna Rogue. Ooh. Again, not sure why he's rogue. <laughs> Doesn't need to be rogue, but he's rogue. Um, it, you know what? It is mentioned in the book that he that Jada Trice has the local inquisitorial planet office under his control as well. Okay. But um, but still, like, don't know why he's rogue. Doesn't need to be rogue. Anyway, he's rogue in the next one. And I assume that means he's going to go to somewhere else. Well, he can't go as rogue as Eisenhorn. Surely, surely. not. Surely. <laughs> we, we have read Pariah, so we know that. But anyway, um, we will be back in a few weeks with that. We're going to get through all of three of these and then return with a normal 40k vote yes. for book. Um, I think I'm going to make the vote for book um, quite a modern one this time. Okay. Yeah, after we finish Ravenna, but let's see. Yes. Um, yeah, don't forget to join the Patreon if you want to send questions. Yep. Don't forget to send fan art. Let us know what you... I really want fan art. I want nice, cute fan art with no torture. Really? I, I have no opinion about fan art. both arms. But but <laughs> send mirror things if you, if you want to. There's no requirement to. But you can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Um, that's that. We've done another book. Uh, you can too. Yay. See you next, next time. time. Bye. Bye.